Welcome to this video on Monday Thursday as we celebrate together even though we're apart. It's great to have you with us uh, whether you're a member of Christchurch or not. Uh, my name is Stephen Baisley uh, and I'm the vicar and I welcome you on behalf of uh, everyone uh, who is a part of our church. And I'm going to begin by inviting you to pray with me True and humble King, hailed by the crowd as Messiah, grant us the faith to know you and love you, that we may be found beside you on the way of the cross, which is the path of glory. Amen. And now we're going to have our Bible reading from John chapter 13, and that's from verses 1 to 17 and 31. To 35. It was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress, and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel round his waist. After that he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not realise now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Well, then, Lord, Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him, and that was why he said not every one was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? he asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. When he was gone, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man is glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will glorify the Son in himself, and will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and just as I told the Jews, so I tell you now. Where I am going, you cannot come. A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Well, maybe this year, more than any, we can relate to the disciples and their experience of how unfamiliar life was that first Holy Week. Things and people they took for granted uh, changed, were lost or died. Expectations were dashed and life turned upside down. They'd gone from joy to grief in the space of a week as Jesus entered Jerusalem on Sunday to applause and was crucified and mocked on Friday. That first Holy Week 
and Good Friday were full of unprecedented events. A Passover meal they had celebrated many times before was redefined, and a Good Friday that felt anything but good. What followed for Jesus' friends was a self-imposed isolation as they grieved and feared for their own lives, a week that started in the public eye and ended in hiding, in lockdown. Maybe things weren't so different from today. But it's amazing how things can change, isn't it? How something as simple as washing our hands can become of vital importance. How do we stop the virus and save lives? By washing our hands. We wash our hands for ourselves and for others, yet before the virus I didn't think much about washing my hands. I would wash them before meals or if they got dirty but the rest of the time I assumed they were clean enough. And in John 13, Jesus interrupts a meal with his friends to wash their feet. Now washing the feet wasn't out of the ordinary, it was something uh, that was commonplace, that they would do because it was practical, because it was necessary in those days. But it was normally the job of a servant. And that's what was so shocking about this foot washing was because it was God himself who was kneeling down. It was the creator and sustainer of everything that we know who was touching their dirty feet. Jesus did the unimaginable just as he did going to the cross. God was getting his hands dirty to show us what love looks like. To show us a love that is unconditional, practical and cleansing. In John 13 we're told that Jesus knew uh, two things in particular. First that he was going to leave this world and go to his father. And secondly, Jesus knew that the father had put all things under his power. Can you imagine that? All things, everything. Now when we think about what power normally does, we usually th see arrogance. We see people who become self-serving. And yet Jesus knows that true power enables us to serve. Enables us to stoop down, to humble ourselves before others. And Jesus is preempting what the cross will do how it can make us clean before God. Washing our hands may save our lives, but when Jesus washed our sins away, he makes us truly clean. We become forgiven and renewed. Only his washing brings new life and makes us right with God. Before the current situation, I always considered that my hands were clean enough. I didn't think I needed anyone to teach me how to wash them. And yet, it turns out I did. I watched a video, I showed it to my children, how to wash my hands properly. How to be clean. I had to humble myself enough to accept that I didn't really know. And when Jesus offered to wash his friend's feet, Peter was indignant. No, you will not wash my feet, he said to Jesus. And I wonder how many of us feel that way about God. We might be happy with a bit of reflection, a meditation, a hymn, or even reading the Bible. But we don't need Jesus. We don't need to be made right. We can't accept that we've rebelled against God. So when someone suggests the fact that we might need to be cleansed, we get angry just like Peter did. I don't need Jesus. I'm fine. I'm a good person. Many people say that and act that way. The problem is that when we insult our maker or anyone for that sake, ignoring that breakdown in relationship doesn't make it better. It doesn't restore what's broken. No matter how nice we are to everyone else, 
in the same way. We're affected by the virus in one way or another. We're all affected by sin. We're all, by nature, those who reject Jesus. So will we allow ourselves to be washed by him? Will we recognise our need for him and for what he's done for us? But maybe you've already found forgiveness through Jesus' death and you're wondering what that means for you. Well, Monday comes from the word for command. And after Jesus washed his disciples' feet, he gave them a very simple command. It was simple and yet life-changing. He said... Do as I have done for you. One of the most positive things to come out of the current situation is the way that people seem to have chosen to come around one another, to help and support one another, communities and individuals, to serve one another. And by washing feet, Jesus was showing us just how practical God's love is. So maybe we will learn to serve as he did. And at the moment that might mean staying at home, continuing to isolate ourselves from others, not going out. Whilst for others that will mean going to work and doing all that you can to help others. I'm so thankful uh, during this time for those who are acting practically to serve and help those who are sacrificing themselves on the front lines, those around us who are caring and shopping and bringing medicine and walking dogs, those people who are calling others to make sure they're not lonely and on their own, to make sure they have all that they need. And when things return to normal, I pray that people will see just how practical the church is in demonstrating the love of God. And finally, for those of you who are really struggling at this time, for those of you who feel like you are alone and no one knows, no one feels what you're going through, well, the good news is that although we may be isolated from one another, we can never be isolated from Jesus. When Jesus promised to be with us and never forsake us, he meant it. We may be the only one at home, but Jesus is with us by his spirit. He is present and cannot be separated from us. We cannot be removed from his love. We may be isolated from one another, but we're never isolated from Jesus. Or can I invite you to join with me in a prayer? Lord Jesus Christ, you have taught us that when we do for the least of our brothers and sisters, we do also for you. Give us the will to be the servant of others as you were the servant of all and gave up your life and died for us but are alive and reign now and forever. Amen. Thank you.